Hey guys, what is up? This is Cody. Orex Code A, how's it going today? Hopefully everybody watching this video is having yourself a snazzy day. Today's video is a story with some vlog content as well. It's not one of those stories that happened 10 years ago. This happened like three days ago. So this was the story about how I got scammed in New York City. I recently went to New York City for a Bones concert with Team Sesh. Xavier Wolf, Eddie Baker, Cat Soup. Fantastic time as always. Hopped on a train with my girl, went into the city. That's always a really fun time. It's stressful. I have to say that's like one of the one things about going into New York City is making sure you're getting on the right train. Like I always have to ask people like a hundred times to make sure I'm on the right train. I just don't want to like fall asleep on the train, wake up in Washington, D.C. or something. So in the background, here's a little train B-roll. And the reason this isn't just an entire New York City vlog, let me get to that. My intentions were to make a New York City vlog, all right? Listen. So I had this planned for a couple months now. I, I think I bought the tickets back in like March and I've been very excited to go. New York City is one of the, my favorite places of all time. It just feels like pure magic. Every time I go there, it feels like a second home, even though I'd never lived there because there's way too many people. So we get into the city. We come out of Penn Station right next to Madison Square Garden. The last time I went, I remember getting out of Penn Station and seeing Madison Square Garden and seeing like crowds of people all running in. It was 2016, a Kanye concert. Man, I wish I could have gone to that. That was like the floating stage days, dude. Some of the best Kanye concerts of all time. It was hot this day, like 90 degrees. If you've ever been to New York City when it's 90 degrees, it is sweltering. We both got heavy backpacks on, and we're just trying to figure out what to do because we got three hours to burn before the concert, and the hotel is about a 45-minute drive away. So we're kind of walking around being tourists, and I'm sitting on my phone trying to figure out the cheapest way to get across the city to Queens where the hotel and the concert was. And I'm getting stressed out, dude. My back hurts because I'm out of shape with this heavy backpack. We're walking around. I have no idea where I am. I'm just walking around the city. Just There's a lot of coffee shops. The, the, the city looked a lot different since the last time I've been there because this was after COVID. So they had like all of the outdoor dining areas. Half the streets are taken up with like restaurant booths. It was a completely different looking city to me other than the magnificent looking buildings, man. Every time I go to this place, I am just in awe that we as human beings have built such tall buildings. It is just something, it's it's honestly magical. It's a huge difference than anything that I've ever seen in growing up in Connecticut. Like just riding onto the train, as soon as you get into the city, you see that skyline with the sun behind it. It's just pure magic. So I was seeing on my Google Maps app, dude, I was looking at, the, I was peeping the app and it was telling me to do all these different things. Hop on this train, hop on this bus, hop on this metro and then that metro and then you'll finally get there. And it looked like it's just so complicated, man. Being in the, being in a major city with someone that knows how to navigate it is a hundred times more fun. If you're there and you have no idea what the hell you're doing, you'll get lost. And I was really paranoid about having, you know, getting on a subway and ending up on the whole wrong side of the city, missing the concert, whole days ruined. On top of it, we've already been traveling for like four hours. So I sat down frustrated, hot, and I'm just sitting in the sun. And I'm like, all right, let me just call an Uber. It was rush hour. So of course the Uber costed $85. To be fair, it was like a 45 minute drive, which that's a pretty long Uber ride, honestly. Just being in the Uber, Dude, the driving test for New York City must be insane. Like level 11 difficulty. This dude is cutting off FedEx trucks and like creeping through crosswalks as people are crossing. It's like the polar opposite of what they tell you to do here. So we take the Uber, which is pretty, it was so nice. That AC just hit different. All right. And we, we finally get over to Queens and I realized that Queens isn't what I thought it was, man. When every time I go to New York City, I've always gone to places like, uh, Manhattan or I can't remember what area it was, I, I was in last time, but I think I was near Hell's Kitchen. So it was like a relatively nice area of the city. Uh, and I'm not like talking shit about Queens if you're from Queens, but listen, man, listen. It just wasn't the greatest area. It was kind of like an area where I'd be kind of nervous bringing around my fancy expensive camera. And, and listen, I did some research of like the area before I bought the hotel, before I got the tickets. And it seemed like generally a, a decent area, but I was just real nervous about looking like a tourist, man. Something just ruined my confidence with like, Hey guys, what's up? Like holding a vlog camera up. It just didn't seem like that part of the city to be, to be doing that. I don't know why. On top of it, traveling has always been a huge anxiety to me and I'm trying to get over that, you know, little steps. So please give me a break. I tried to get some B-roll for you guys to make like a cool video as I told this story. 
And this is where the story really begins. So we get to Queens and we walk over to the hotel. We're like a couple blocks away from where the Uber dropped us off. And we walk up and this is the hotel I remember seeing on Google Maps. I finally recognize my surroundings. The area is not that bad. And I walk up to the hotel and there's two security guards sitting outside. And I walk up and I'm like reaching for the door and he's just like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I have a reservation at this hotel. He's like, oh, at this hotel right here. And I'm like, yeah. And he's just like, oh, I'm sorry, man. We've converted this to a homeless shelter. You got to go three blocks down to the next hotel. They'll have your reservation. The anxiety. I was like, what? What? Like, how did I not get an email? How did, how did, how was I not contacted about this? Like a million thoughts going through my head. Like, what the hell, man? Like if I, if this next hotel doesn't have my reservation, we're going to be stranded in the city, not nowhere to go. I don't even think there's any more trains back to where I live. The concert's ruined. I'm just freaking out, dude. But at the same time, I'm like, all right, man, maybe, you know, listen, it's going to work out. I'm going to go down to this hotel. They're going to have my reservation. We go, we walk three blocks down like a holiday inn or something it's a little bit nicer i'm not gonna lie it's a little bit nicer than the one i booked then the one i booked was about like 250 bucks which is pretty cheap for a freaking hotel in, in new york city so we get to the holiday inn we go inside and the the people behind the desk are super nice i go up there and i pull up the reservation number uh, on my phone and I'm like hey I have this reservation they told me to come down here because they converted it to a homeless shelter or something and they're like what I was like, uh, yeah, they told me to come down here. You guys should have my reservation. And they're like, yeah, I don't know what they're telling people, but that's not true, man. I I'm sitting there devastated, just, just mentally drained, mentally like what the hell is going on right now. But luckily, they're like, we do have a few more rooms left, but it's, uh, it's going to be $420, 420, man. And I'm like, double the price. <laughs> On top of it, where's my money that I already spent on that last reservation? So I don't know if I gave broke vibes or what, but they're like, yeah, you can go sit down over there and try to go on a third party app and get it cheaper. So we, we did, obviously. I was going to try and do that and try to get, you know, save a little bit of money. So we sit down in the lobby and we're scrolling through apps trying to find like, I, I don't know how, why it works like this. Like what, why, why, why would the front desk even all, like tell us about this if they're trying to make money? Like, yeah, go sit down, go on a third party app. That's not our app to, to get a ticket to our hotel. That's cheaper. Well, how does that make any sense at all? Listen, if you can explain that in the comments, please explain it. Cause I just don't get that. Like, why would they be trained to even say that? Like on a business standpoint, wouldn't, the, wouldn't they want to make the most money out of me? But anyways, we sit down and like, after taxes and fees, we'd save maybe $20 booking it through a third party thing. And I was just done. I was like, you know what, dude, $20. Listen, let's just go and buy it right at the desk. So I go up there, we cop the ticket, we go up to the room and it's like a pretty small hotel. Listen, for $400, I would kind of expect something nice. It wasn't like dirty. It was clean. The bed was nice. The TV was broken. Listen, listen, I thought I broke it, dude. I thought I was like messing with the back of it trying to dude, the, the the sound would come on but the picture was blank so i'm like trying to see if everything's plugged in on the back shaking a little bit you know you know sometimes you just gotta bang on technology and then it'll work but i did i wasn't banging on the tv listen i was just happy we had a place to stay that's literally the only thing that was on my mind i had my laptop so you know i could connect to the wi-fi and watch tv if i had to listen i thought of these things all right mentally I was prepared. So the day's going great so far. Four hours of traveling, getting scammed, $250 for a hotel room. Now it's time for the concert. So excited, dude. So freaking excited. So we take an Uber probably like 10, 15 minutes away. We were pretty close to the concert venue. And we show up, dude. And this is where it gets crazy. This is where it gets crazy. Okay, I'm, I'm forgetting one part, dude. Before we even left the train station, like back where I live, four people sitting there came up to me dude it's x code a what's up dude that was crazy it was so cool like before we even left i met people that watch the videos man it's so nice to be able to meet you guys that watch the videos it's it's very like uh sometimes it's hard for me to wrap my head around like i make videos i talk into a mic look into the camera and like um i i realize that people watch the videos but it's just so it's so surreal when i actually get to meet people that have been watching for years and it's, it's it's just so cool to meet you guys man and the moment i got to the venue there's like a big line out the door there's thunderstorms rolling in so i'm like kind of nervous it's about to start pouring rain but while i was in line dude i probably shook 20 30 hands 
of, of people that watched my videos. Everybody was so excited to meet me. It was like, it was insane. It was definitely like a record amount of people of like people coming up to me that watch the videos. I've never in my entire life felt like a more, more of a, a niche micro internet celebrity, dude. So it was so nice to meet you guys if you're watching this video that, were, that was at the concert, man. Literally throughout the entire concert, people were coming up to me, shaking my hand, getting pictures. It was insane, honestly. One of the people even said they've been watching my videos since they were 12 years old. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe that. Like, imagine having a 12 year old kid going into their room and seeing me with my winter hat on smoking weed on a YouTube video. I just couldn't believe it. So the, the line is like moving and we're like 10 feet away from getting into this venue and it starts pouring rain, dude, like lightning all over the place. It was just like perfect timing. We just got in when it, when it started downpouring, but the concert opened up with cat soup and an amazing set list man just just great great music and just the entire literally the entire concert there's people coming up to me like saying what's up saying they watch my videos it was insane like i'm not trying to exaggerate here like 50 or 60 people probably total it was so cool to meet you guys i don't know people ask me like oh did you go out in public and people notice you no like not really Maybe in like my hometown or something, sometimes. Usually it's at like a concert or something, like a Wiz Khalifa concert, for instance. Like a bunch of bunch of stoners all getting together at once. Like that's like a way higher chance of someone like actually watching my videos or something. So like at that kind of situation, that's usually where I meet people that watch my videos. But like this was just like a a whole next level, man. I remember one of them asked me, like, dude, are we gonna see you in the mosh pit? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. The Bones concerts are a little crazy. And man, was it crazy? We were kind of in the center, but a little bit far back. You know, I feel, I feel like it was further enough back from the mosh pit. Nah, 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 nah. Xavier Wolf came on, started singing. He started off with a banger as always. Dude, the mosh pit just like developed in a second. Me and my girl both got pushed back right away. I was like trying to hold on to her so she didn't fall down. Amazing concert. Just absolutely amazing. So one of the best set lists I could ever like imagine in my head, man. I, they played like almost all the songs that I was hoping to hear besides Yellowstone. I was really excited to hear Yellowstone by Bones and Eddie Baker, but I was pissed, dude. They even were like, do you want to hear uh, Yellowstone? Or I can't remember the other song and the whole crowd. I, I swear they chanted Yellowstone, but he picked the other one. But anyways, I get that not everybody watching is like a Bones, Eddie Baker, Xavier Wolf fan, but listen, I am, it's definitely some of my favorite artists of all time. Anytime that there's an opportunity to see them live, I'm going, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm freaking going. And I suggest you do too if they're, they're coming to your hometown on the next tour or something. It was by far probably... All right, listen. Nothing will ever top the 2012 Wiz Khalifa concert I went to because I was VIP front row. Like that, that was insane. I was like 16 years old. Like that was that was like peak serotonin to the max right there. So, but this was literally number two. Like one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Such an amazing show. They even ended the concert with "Break Stuff" by Limp Bizkit, dude. I'm a huge Limp Biscuit fan. I know some people on the internet, like, I don't know, it's like a meme that they're just like a bad artist or something. I freaking love them. I've always loved them since I was in elementary school. To hear that, like, in a live performance setting was so awesome. So the concert ended. I felt like an old man, dude. My back was hurting. My knees were hurting, dude. I, I need to get in shape. I, I've never felt so humbled in my whole life, dude. I felt like ancient. I felt like a, a prehistoric being. And I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. Listen, it was hot. It was like 90 degrees or something. A shower has never hit different. I'll tell you that for one thing. That was a beautiful shower. Now, this is where the story gets a little bad, dude. Listen, the, the next morning, we had like, you know, a couple hours before the train. And this is where I planned on making like, I was going to tell this story in the hotel room, make a little vlog. And this is where things kind of went bad, dude. Listen, seven in the morning, we woke up. We went downstairs to get that complimentary breakfast. All right, got to get my money's worth for 400 bones. No pun intended, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking fried, dude. I went down there. They had an amazing cinnamon bun. My girl didn't agree with me, but I thought the cinnamon bun was crazy. Made myself a bagel and got a coffee. Dude, I, I started eating. I felt great because... 
Um, before I travel, I usually don't eat a whole lot. It's just one of my things, man. I don't know. I just feel like like uh, it just makes me more nervous or something. I, I have no idea what it is. I've always been like that with traveling and stuff. I usually don't eat a whole lot before beforehand. So I was starving. I, I freaking ate that food so quick. And the moment, dude, the moment I sipped that coffee, uh, I didn't put any creamer in it. So it was just black coffee. It was so strong. The moment I drank it, dude, oh boy, dude, I had to run back up to the hotel room. Listen, I'm not getting in detail. I'm not trying to gross you out, but listen, <laughs> listen, that morning coffee hit, dude, it hit. And that, dude, it set off my anxiety so bad. This is like one of my worst nightmares with traveling. I'm, 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 dude, I'm stuck on the toilet and now, dude, time is running out. We got like an hour left that we got to get the Uber 45 minutes back to the train to go on a train back to the, the, to where I live. It's like a three hour train. And now I'm stuck on the toilet. I'm freaking out, dude. I'm like, oh man, you know, like what, what if I have to go in the Uber, dude? Like, oh, like what, what if I'm, what if I'm sick right now? Like, what if I puke in the Uber, dude? I'm gonna have to pay all this money. I'm going to embarrass myself. I got to sit in the train, dude. I'm freaking out. I'm, I'm, I'm having a fucking I'm having a freaking panic attack, dude. It was not a good time. Like one of the reasons I'm like bad with traveling is like I have to talk myself down from like, all right, I'm not going to get sick during this trip. I'm going to be fine. It's going to be all right. <laughs> now this is happening, dude. Like category eight, dude. It was terrible. But we just chilled in the hotel, uh, pr probably like right to the finish line of like when we should call the Uber. Ended up, dude, the Uber was like $40 more than if I just went and like right when we woke up, dude. It's crazy how the surcharges in New York City happen like when, uh, you know, people start to wake up. I understand on like a business standpoint. There's a lot of freaking people in that city millions literally millions of people so it was quite the expensive trip i have to say <laughs> the next time i go to the city i am 100 going to be doing more planning with like learning how to use trains maybe subways i don't know a lot, a lot of people were saying dude just don't even try the subway like just if you don't know what you're doing you're going to get lost but luckily on the uber back i started to feel better like I, it must have just been that coffee coffee never does that to me though that's why i was like freaking out like i could I've never had that issue where you wake up in the morning, drink coffee, and like have to go to the bathroom. It's never happened to me, but I tell you that, dude, this coffee must have been extra, extra strong or something. I don't know what it was. We finally make it to Penn Station, and they finished Penn Station since the last time I've been into New York City. It is looking extravagant. Like, it's so modern and beautiful. Look at it. I have a video of it right here. Look at this. Look at how beautiful that looks. And this was like the probably the most stressful part about the travel situation. Other than the fear of having to destroy the Amtrak train bathroom. They got these little like kiosk screens on all these different escalators that like, going down. And like the train that I was trying to, to catch didn't have the track numbers. So I'm sitting there like freaking out. We had to ask like three different people. Oh yeah, on top of it, before we even got to this beautiful scenery that I just showed you, we went to the complete wrong side of Penn Station. They're like, yeah, dude, Amtrak's on the other side. Like, you gotta go to the other building entirely. I'm freaking out. We're running out of time. This is this always happens to me. When I'm trying to catch the train back, I always mess up. It's like level 99 anxiety with no skill cape, man. God, leave a like on the video for that cringy RuneScape joke, please. But thankfully, listen, my impressions the, first, the last time I went through this ordeal is nobody wants to help you. But the customer service at, at the Penn Station, honestly, Helped me a lot, dude. Helped me so much. They were very, very kind. But these freaking kiosks, man, they wouldn't show the, the track number until the last minute. So you had to be in line, ready to go. Like, people were rushing around, running. It was like the Home Alone movie where they're running through the Chicago airport. That's the vibe that I was getting being in this place. And on top of it, it gave me more anxiety because the train right previous, it would go from, like, boarding to last call within the matter of five minutes and that's when the track number would come up so i'm sitting like oh man i hope this is the right one <laughs> but dude we made it on the train and it, it's almost it's crazy how fast things work you sit down on the train it starts moving like that's how fast it goes you cannot be late to these trains but we get on the train back and i'm feeling better at this point man i'm, I'm anxiety's gone dude i'm on my way back it's great uh, my dad actually ended up picking us up from the train station, bringing us to a bakery. Got, got a blueberry loaf and a lemon cake, man. Fire. Absolutely fire. I wish I had a picture of it to show you, but I just ate that lemon cake in like four bites, dude. It was crazy good. So good. So there was a couple lessons learned on this travel experience. Number one, 
Am I going to get that $250 back? I got to call my credit card company today. All right, listen, I forgot to yesterday, so we got to do it today. Listen, I forgot to mention the lady behind the front desk said that I don't know why they're telling people that we have their reservations. You should get refunded um, if you, you know, booked it for this time period. So hopefully, listen, hopefully I checked my credit card statement. I haven't even checked it. <laughs> I forgot. I'm glad I'm making this video, dude, reminding myself. Um, I, I Hopefully, listen, I go and it's just already credited and I don't have to do that. But listen, it's it's never a big deal. If you ever get scammed with a credit card, you just call them, say it was fraud. They send you a new card in the mail in three days. It's done. Listen, use a debit card on the other hand. Have fun, all right? Two weeks plus, you, you can't use your bank account. It's a terrible time. It, just America things, am I right? For all you Europeans watching? Shout out to the Europeans watching. Let me know in the comments down below where you're watching the video from, inside or outside the United States. So the other lesson that I learned was 100 million percent, plan the travel out more. Like plan how I'm gonna get to and from this, the, the location of where the hotel is, because the train from Queens to Penn Station was like $3. The Uber ride, $65 in the morning. It was 85 when we got there because it was like around rush hour, which was understandable. But I would have saved a lot of money if I had known just how to navigate the city. So listen, you know, lessons learned. All right. Listen, experiences had fun times. Bones concert, 10 out of 10. Just an amazing show. He puts on such an amazing performance. Listen, dude, where's the mystery boxes? All right. Listen, anybody from Team Sash is watching this. Listen, drop some mystery boxes. I want to make some unboxing videos. I miss making those. All right. Listen, where's the mystery boxes? hook it up all right listen before this video ends thank you to everybody supporting me on patreon your support helps me out more than you know for a dollar to a month you can support the channel and get access to the 165 plus blazing videos smoking q a's nature vlogs there's a whole lot of cool content on there check the link in the description and in the pinned comment below for more information i'll put a list of all the names on screen right now thank you very much for the for your support your support Helps me do cool things like this, man. I gotta say, my YouTube stats are way down. I gotta make more YouTube videos, get the numbers back up. I wanna hit a million subscribers. I'm motivated to do so. But I gotta say, man, the Patreon support really has been helping me out, especially with the house expenses, the mortgage. Listen, I got a lot of bills to pay. I've been trying to cut back on the sponsor videos because I feel like I, I kind of blasted you guys with those like a lot. So listen, I don't want to make this segment too long because this is where the watch time drops off because I want to, I want to talk a little bit more at the end of this video, but thank you for your support. I appreciate it a lot. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever had an experience like this with a hotel where you show up and they're just like, yeah, we don't have your reservation or something goes wrong i've never even heard about that like they converted the hotel to a homeless shelter listen i'm all for for help, help, helping homeless people and stuff but they couldn't have gave me an email a phone call or something man this seems like a pretty important thing to do to tell people that spent spent money at your place to like hey man you're gonna have to figure out another hotel room like uh, just travel into the city what if i was traveling from california or something i just got there after a freaking seven hour flight probably another two hours of travel in the city just to get to this hotel just for them to just be like hey bro you're beat we took your money quite a shady establishment if you ever had to ask me but hey man the hotel room we stayed at was debatably nicer minus the tv being broken and i remember the morning after i i just wanted to listen I, I had to make sure with the clerk i was like hey i just want to let you know like the tv wasn't working um, and she's just like, oh yeah, we know it's a, it's a known problem with a bunch of the TVs that are broken. And I'm like, you couldn't have said something about that. Listen, you're having me spend 400 pounds. Like you couldn't give me a room with a nice TV, but listen, I didn't say anything like, I didn't say anything like that, but I just wanted to make sure that she knew that I didn't break it. Cause I didn't want to get home, see a $500 Samsung best buy charge on my credit card statement because this hotel wanted to blame me for the broken TV. That would have just been fantastic, all right? Double scammed in New York City life story. So that was the story of me going to New York City, getting scammed $250, shitting my brains out, and uh, wishing I made a longer vlog, all right? Listen, next time, there's always next time, I got a, another travel experience coming up in the next, I think, week. So I'm hopefully gonna get the courage of, you know, hey guys, what is up? Listen, I've always, I, I've, I've kind of like, over the years, listen, I know I used to make a lot more vlogs. 
I don't know what it is, man. I, I, I want to say I've lost confidence in the ability to vlog a little bit. I, I don't want to like say that to, to disappoint you guys. I'm just trying to be honest with you, you know, just have a little talk with you guys about it because it's like, I know that you guys want to see it. And that's like amazing to me. It's like my dream come true to be able to make videos for you guys. And I want to, and it's just like, it almost feels like, I don't know, like I, I'm not interesting enough when I'm holding the camera there. Like, I don't know what to say, you know, like that's the feeling that like the doubt in my head. So I'm trying to get past that because honestly, I'm not all that of an interesting person, honestly, as much as, as much as the crazy stuff I did back in high school and stuff, like my everyday life now isn't that crazy. So when I go out and do these, you know, these travel events, it's like a lot for me. It's a lot of anxiety. So it's like kind of hard for me um, to hold the camera up and like talk about entertaining stuff. Like that's the one thing that I need to, the one barrier that I'm trying to get over. All right, listen, so I'm taking steps, dude. I'm working at it. I'm trying to get you guys better content. I hope you guys enjoy it, man. I hope you guys have a stellar day, dude, a snazzy day. If you guys are interested in HHC, I started a company in the last couple months called snazzysesh.com. If you guys like HHC vapes or gummies, Check it out, man. I've been getting blasted off the, the vape pens, man. I've got new flavors coming soon, so I'll announce that when that's ready. The feedback has been really positive. I've been really excited about that because I want to make a product that you guys really love. Thank you for spending the time out of your day to watch my video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Stay high, stay lifted, and stay snazzy.